ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय पीस एंड ब्लेसिंग एवरीबाडी लिसन आई एम जस्ट गोइंग बी आई एम गोइंग कीप अ 100 विथ यू समवन एक्स मी टू डू अ वीडियो अबाउट मंत्रस एंड मंत्र इज अ वास्ट सब्जेक्ट वास्ट टॉपिक व्हेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट मंत्र एंड द साइंस ऑफ साउंड vibration and delivering the mind we're talking about something that you could do a powerpoint presentation on and approach it from so many angles scientifically spiritually religiously practically the science of sound and the science of mantras and like i really wanted to sit down and do this topic some let me walk backwards so the sun could be in my face i didn't put the camera on i mean um the the flashlight on i wanted to do this topic some justice But as it is, you know, things are just busy in my life right now. So I'm just going to go off the top of the head and talk about mantra and chanting. First of all, the word mantra is a two-part word, compound word in Sanskrit It comes from man, man, manu, thought, thinking, mind, man, manu. That's manu, thinking being. Trayate. What is trayate? Trayate means to deliver or to save someone. So like when they say, I'm saved by the blood of Christ, you are trayate. You are tra by the blood of Christ. Blood of Jesus. You know, I have a friend who likes to say, blood of Jesus. So, mantra just means something that delivers the mind or saves the mind. Now, what's so interesting about mantra? You have different categories of mantras and chants and stuff stuff like that. You have something on your body. Formerly I believe that there was 144,000 chakras on the human body. Let's just call chakras points or wheels of light, right? They're actually energy centers where energy goes in and out of the body. I used to think there was 144,000 of them. Recently my information was updated and there's only 88,000 chakras on the human body when a person has these thing called japa beads these beads that hindus wear or vedic people wear they not wear they use them for chanting you might have seen rosary among the christians and the muslims have a bead set of 99 plus 1 tassel bead well in the hindu world for lack of a better word they have a uh, matter of fact i should do this camera like this i hope this doesn't mess up Oh, I hope I didn't mess nothing up. But um, so in the Hindu beads, it's 108. Everybody who doesn't know about 108, Google 108. That is an extremely, extremely, extremely significant number. So when you chant on a set of 108 beads, first of all, chanting mantras is perfected with 100 chants, and when you chant it 108 times you're just going above perfection or at least making sure that the imperfect chants that you did now have a chance to be perfected when you chant a mantra 108 times particularly transcendental mantras now let's understand first of all before we go any further the science of sound my name is caprice scott caprice is a word it doesn't apply to my existence it doesn't apply to my eternal being It's just a name that's connected and attached to this body, to this mind upon this particular frequency. It has nothing to do with my spiritual self. When you deal with words that have to do with the spiritual self or the energy of God, that's when you're dealing with transcendental mantras. Now, I could tell you mantras like um Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitor Varenyam भर्गो दियो यो नचोदया सो वेन यू थोक अबाउट गायत्री मंत्रा वेन यू थोक अबाउट गायत्री मंत्र यू थोक अबाउट मंत्रज ऑफ क्रिएशन ऑफ द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड दे हैव द पावर ऑफ प्यूरिफिकेशन अप टू द पॉइंट ऑफ सत्या लो विच इज दैवन सेवन हेवन दे कैन प्यूरिफाई यू अप टू दैट दो ब्रह्म हलो इन द हाइस्ट प्लैनेट्स बट दे कैन सेंड यू टू द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड दीज आर मटेरियल मंत्रस You saw the African slaves women had muzzles on their face because they knew the power of sound and they could say sounds could say words 
and make the slave master just drop right dead, right there on the spot. So they had to cover their mouth. They had to muzzle their mouth. You saw the pictures before. Mantras are very powerful. You could use a mantra, take a blade of grass, touch it to water, use a mantra, and turn the blade of grass into a missile. They say this dude sound crazy, but under a hurricane, you can see blades of grass sticking outside of a brick wall. Like, literally, a chum, 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 like a kung fu movie or something. Death by a thousand cuts. So mantra can be used to empower your material life or it can be used to return you to your spiritual original form such as Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare That mantra right there is like totally outside of your material cosmos People looking at me like I'm crazy and they getting the benefit just by hearing that mantra when you chant spiritual transcendental mantras, what happens is that those 88,000 chakras each get a layer of protection. So if I chant 108 times Hare Krishna, then I will have one layer, one set, one round will give me one layer. So if I chant Hare Krishna mantra 108 times, times 16, 16 rounds a day or 1,728 times a day, what will happen is that I will have 16 layers of protection on my chakras. At the roof of your mouth, you have occult nerves that connect directly to your brain. And these nerves, because they connect to your brain when you chant mantras, when you chant Allah's holy names, Allah's 99 plus one names, like Yahu, Yahu, Yaman, La Ya'lamu, Mahu, Illahu. Oh God, oh God, oh He, oh He who no one knows what he is except he. And then you start chanting, Ar-Razaq, Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Mudhilu, Al- Yo, there's like 99 attributes of Allah known to mortal man, and a thousand are known to the prophets, right? And we have something similar in the so-called Hindu tradition, Sahasraranam. And when you say these holy names of the Lord, whether it's in Arabic, Hebrew, Hebrew is an interesting language, Arabic, Hebrew, they seem to have a different origin. The Semitic languages have a different origin than the Indo-European languages. Indo-European languages are offshoots of the original language spoken in India, which was Afro-Indian language, because the first people to arrive in India, they didn't come from a spaceship, they didn't come from China, they came from the land of the Afro people. So the first root language after the Mount Toba incident of 73,000 to 80,000 years ago, after the 73,000 years ago, Mount Toba chased the survivors out of Africa and into India. A few people stayed behind in Africa and a few went to India. Those people were speaking an Indo-Afro language, or should I say Afro-Indo language. We're gonna put Africa back in the center because that's where Dr. Jeffrey said it should be. Everything spread out from Africa and nobody can't disprove that. I don't care what you believe in, you can't disprove it. When you disprove it, then you come talk to the dude, all right? But until then, my ancestors are from Africa, yours are from Africa, I don't care if you don't like it, you just gotta deal with it. Krishna said to tolerate that stuff like you tolerate the passing of the seasons. So, man, trayate. So this Indo language, when you're dealing with the Arabic languages and the Semitic languages, and you're dealing with the Sanskrit languages, when your tongue touches the roof of your mouth over and over in certain spots, those nerves stimulate certain parts of your brain. And the brain stimulates certain parts of the hormonal endocrine system to produce hormones that are for your beneficial. Now, you can check the scientific efficacy of how sound can affect your cells on a molecular level, how sound can affect your mood, or you can try a simple experiment. Get some nice stereo headphone speakers, right? Go to one of those meditation stations. Play it for about 15 minutes. See how you feel. Then go to Tunnel Vision Radio or go to Little Uzi Vert Radio on Pandora. Now I'm not knocking the young generation of music or the new music, there's a time and a place for everything. And you know, it's a time to be hip and it's a time to know what your children are listening to. So go to Uzi Vert Radio and see the difference that the sound vibrations have on you and see it for yourself so I don't have to tell you nothing. 
mantra is very important. I was asked to speak about some of my personal experiences with mantra, but it's too many. Sometimes you'll cry. Yo, let me tell you what mantra really does for me, especially chanting Hare Krishna. Yo, it just gets my blood flowing. It gets my, my spiritual energy flowing. And it's always centered around the heart chakra and it spreads from there. Like I said, you might feel emotional. It's just, yo, there's no way to describe transcendental emotions through a material medium except for me to say, yo, chant this because it, it has 32 syllables. So, you know, 32 times your tongue is hitting the roof of your mouth and it's affecting your hormones and your endocrine system. So I would say, listen, I've had so many revelations. All I can say is the more you do for Krishna, the more he does for you. Even though the desired goal is for us as living entities is to do something for Krishna without expecting anything in return. Don't worry. Krishna's a big man and he always reciprocates. Um, I think I should kind of stop this short here. What's going to happen is after I stop this video, I'm going to be like, man, I should have said this, that, and the third. But just remember, mantra is used to deliver mantrayate i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to touch and i just pray that krishna gives me the inspiration that i could continue doing videos like this and serving people but yeah chant y'all oh yeah and let me just be honest with y'all right there's so many processes of religion there's so many scriptures a man like srila Prabhupada put out like over 80 books and stuff like that i'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all we are living in dying times. Whether you're a Christian and call it the end times, or you are a Hindu and you call it Kali Yug, we are living in dying times. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not gonna say don't read and don't study, but ain't nobody got no time to master all of them religious arts. Just like Kung Fu, you know, to get it to be a real black belt and all of that, it takes years. Karate, all of that, it takes years. Yo, we ain't got no time to master all of Srila Prabhupada's books or every or every Muslim book and every holy scripture and memorize every scripture. Unless, of course, if you can abandon material life and just dedicate yourself 100% to the absorption of knowledge of God, then yeah, you got time for that. But for the app, like people like me that got to work, you know, I read when I can, I study when I can, I listen to YouTube videos when I can, lectures, audio books. But of course, I can't totally absorb myself into the studying world like I would want to. So I nourish myself. If you can't get a solid meal in your life, you go to the store, you do, you buy stuff like milkshakes, put some peanut in it, you might get a nutriment. So you have to get the nourishment you can. And for me, my nourishment comes through chanting mantra, particularly the Hare Krishna mantra. But you gotta do what works for you at the end of the day and what's good for your conscience. But again, Whatever mantra you use, make sure it's one of the names of the Most High so you can get an eternal transcendental benefit. There are mantras for people like Lakshmi. There's mantras for the God of War. If somebody needs to get their butt dealt with, there's mantras for them. But you're only going to get a temporary benefit off of that. It's never an eternal benefit. And there's not one mantra that can give you immortality besides... Hare Krishna and any other mantra that's related directly to the names of the Supreme Lord, I'll tell you why. Krish. Krishna means the one who removes repeated birth and death. So Krish means the repeated cycle of birth and death. And Na is the negation of that. So when you meet Krishna, you're meeting the only person who can remove the re repeated cycle of birth and death. That is an absolute transcendental mantra with all blessings. Because you know, once you can make me immortal, everything within that is covered. But if all you could do for me is give me a good wife, if you're a demigod, or if all you could do is make me live long and strong and wealthy, but you can't address my real disease, my real disease is birth. Because once I take birth, I'm guaranteed death. My real disease is death. Because once I die, I'm guaranteed birth. I have to start this nonsense and foolishness all over again? Nah. And there's not one demigod. You can't name him. Ogun, Oshun, Yemeya. There's not one Egun. There's not one ancestor. Even with all respects to Eshu, even Eshu can't give you eternal life. This is the real. He knows. He could ask me, I would tell him to his face with all respects, and he would tell me the same thing. I can't give you eternal life. None of them can.
no Orisha or demigod, even Lord Shiva, who's not even, a, and this, this particular part about Shiva, I'm just gonna run this down real quick because you got a lot of so-called know-it-all Hindus that's coming on my Shiva video trying to school me. And all I'm doing is repeating what is an authoritative source on the science of Shiva. Now let's understand this before we go any further. There's Vishnu Tattva, or the science of God. And you have Jiva Tattva, which is the science of the living entities. From the insignificant ant all the way up to Lord Brahma. That is Jiva Tattva. So Jiva Tattva is the living entities or the servants of the Lord. Vishnu Tattva is anytime you're dealing with the name Krishna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people worship him as Buddha or Jesus, you're dealing with originally the original source of all of that is Vishnu Tattva, the science of Vishnu. Peace. How are you? Yeah, you good? Are you Muslim? Uh, I don't know if you could call me you Muslim. I know Ibadullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You said Allah because I. Yeah, Allah, Allahu Ahad. Allah. So if I say Allah, I could go to Antarctica. If it's an Eskimo, I, say, I call him the name, I call Allah, Allah, whatever the Eskimo speak. You know what I'm saying? Are you recording something? Uh, yeah, I'm just recording. Don't worry, you're yeah. safe. You say, when you with me, everything is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. This energy is transcendental, brother. Tasarafna, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Anta Maghrib. Maghrib? Oh yeah, you look Maghrib. Yeah. Yeah, what, min wada halfa? Min Casablanca. Casablanca, but you don't look so blanco. Yeah. You look a little brown. Yeah, brown. Yeah, khalli balik ya Sayyid. Tayyib, alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. So, um, Yo, I lost my thought, but um, <clears throat> where was I at? Oh God, well, it happened again, but um, oh yeah, 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 about Lord Shiva. So I just want to quickly say, Lord Shiva is neither a living entity like me and you, meaning he's not a demigod because all of the demigods are Jiva Tattva. All of them, from Brahma down, from Obatala down, they're all Jiva Tattva, meaning, I can elevate to the level of demigod as well as you can. Lord Shiva is not in that category, but he's not in the category of Vishnu Tattva. He's in his own category, please. They call him Mahadev because they call him like the greatest demigod, but he's not even a demigod. Demigods apply only to Jiva Tattva. Demigods does not apply to Vishnu or Shiva Tattva. Okay, we're gonna leave that there for now. Because I'm, I'm getting looks, the people might be scared. They're not used to black people talking beyond, you know, like world star hip hop and all of that. So maybe I'm making them a little scared. That's all right. They could be scared all they want. Another thing, take it back. All they ever did was steal. Take it back. Go to the museum. And the next time you see somebody trying to white explain your history, make sure you're well versed enough to at least let them know. Like Killmonger in that movie Black Panther. She was trying to white explain his stuff, and he straight asked her to his face. All of this stolen stuff, how did your ancestors get it? And it's real, and time is coming for judgment of this country. Peace and blessings, y'all. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Chant mantra.